Hey guys, um, I've been looking for different video ideas, different things to do, and so um, Emily suggested to me uh, to do video tags, tag videos, and um, I was like, what's a tag video? Like, I thought you did something and then you tagged somebody and I'm so far behind, <laughs> behind things that I have no idea what's going on. But, um, so she told me, no, it's a tag video. It's basically like a Q&A video, um, question tag thing, which I love stupid random shit like this. So I actually have three or four of them here and I'm just going to start from the top. I'm only going to do one, one tag per video. Um, the other ones are kind of blah, just random question tag, but interesting all the same. The first one's the shortest one. It's, uh, the goth tag. So this is my goth tag video, um, suggested to me by Emily Boo. Um, I'm going to link her here and you guys can check her out if you want to. She's quite a cool chick. Um, question number one, how long have you been goth? I first started dressing like this probably in 2001. I started noticing things that were goth in style without really even knowing what goth was in about 2000. Um, started getting out of my metalhead stage and preferring like, oh, I like the corset look. Oh, I like the darker makeup and, oh, the long kind of flowy dresses and veily shit. And it just really caught my eye. And when my first husband and I split up, um, the boyfriend I had after that used to be goth back in his day and he actually taught me everything that I needed to know about the style and the music and kind of got me into all the shit and I was very resistant at first because none of it actually interested me like the music sucked um but then once I was left on my own to discover my own shit I found out that I really quite liked it um how were you introduced to goth I just answered that it was my ex-boyfriend Fred um what gothic subgenre would you put yourself in? That's a tricky question because there are there's so many different little subgenres now. Whereas when I got into it, it was like you're either goth or you're not. Um, at the time, I would have said the whole like Renaissance goth, romantic goth, or whatever, because I used to wear the veils over my face and the long dresses and the like long black wedding dresses and um, I have a picture that I'll put in right here. Twinkle, twinkle all the night. Then the traveler in the dark thanks you for your little spark. He could not see which way to go if you did not That was my embarrassing moment there. But um, then I went into like fetish goth where it was always just vinyl corsets, vinyl garter belts, um, dabbled in all kinds of shit at that time. Um, and then it was for the longest time more of like glitter goth, uh, because I love glitter and shit. And now I guess I'm more of like an, a non goth goth because I've gone so far outside. I, I can't really even consider myself goth. I'm just, I'm, I love a lot of goth things and interests and the look still and the clothes and the old music. Um, but I don't live like any kind of goth lifestyle really unless I'm like a realistic goth where it's like you just are who you are and I don't know that probably makes no sense at all I still like everything I have everything in common with the, the cliche goths not everything like I don't like Christian death and I don't like the old school goth bands but you know love Bauhaus um, though uh, love uh, 
spider webs, spiders, creepy shit, bats, you know, skill animals, you know, shit like that. I, I love all the stupid shit. I'm, I'm like a childish kind of goth chick, even though I'm an old lady now, but, um, yeah. Um, what do you believe to be the basis of the goth subculture? Um, I'd have to say that being different, unique, kooky, um, heavy makeup usually, pale skin, heavy makeup, black clothes, goth music, and liking spooky stuff, Tim Burton, like there's a lot of cliches out there that are basically, if you're into any of that, you're considered goth, you're classified as goth. Anything that I listed previously in the previous question, if you like any of that, you're considered goth. Emily the Strange, Nightmare for Christmas, you know, um, Corpse Ride, that kind of shit. What do you dislike about being goth? I dislike how nothing is clear cut anymore. It's like, are you goth or are you not goth? And there's so many elitists out there that would look at me and laugh, but then there's like baby bats out there that would look at me and be like, oh, um, oh you've been into it for so long. You're so, uh, I've gone through that stage when I was younger. Um, I actually rounded up quite a few followers back in my day. Um, been into it. I mean, it's been like fucking almost 20 years now that I've been into it and I know that's not that long compared to a lot of other people but it, it is a good time to be into something it's a good amount of time um, and then you change and you grow and evolve over that time um, but I don't like how there are elitists as there is with everything and they look at you and they just think nah you're not good enough nah no goth would wear that no goth would have that color hair no goth would do their makeup like that or you know, no goth would like oldies. I mean, it's like, get over yourself. That's it. But that can be said for any genre, not just goth. Um, what do your parents think about it? My parents, well, my dad's dead, but my mom, when she could think straight, she fucking hated it. She, ever since, even when I was a metalhead, she hated anything different. You know, she's all traditional Asian, like, gotta look respectable. Get the shit out of your face. It looks like you have a booger hanging out of your nose. Why do you always got to stick metal in your face? What's wrong with you? And, you know, you don't need such heavy makeup, even when I didn't really wear makeup. Stop wearing so much goddamn black all the time. And then it evolved into, like, as my look evolved and I got heavier into wearing makeup and doing stuff. You know, oh, you look like an alien. You look like a piece of shit. I'm so embarrassed to walk around with you. Everybody's always staring at you. And, and no sport at all. Even at this, like before she had her last stroke, I, I've always tried to get it into her head that just because I look like this, it doesn't mean I'm a bad person. And I wish that she would just have been able to see me for who I am and not what I look like, you know, but she's incapable of that. Um, eyebrows or no eyebrows, uh, either, or I have eyebrows now, but they look it looks like I just draw them on and I don't have eyebrows. I love the drawn on look because it gives you a lot more freedom. You can do whatever you want to do. Sometimes people's eyebrows don't grow in the right place. Um, but then real eyebrows, some people have the most amazing real eyebrows and I envy them so much. So I think just whatever look suits you, there's, there should be no rule on if you have eyebrows or not. What is stupid though, is when people cut the slashes in their eyebrows, I think that looks really dumb. It's either shave it off or keep it on. What is your favorite band? Um, my favorite band is, I'm, I'm assuming of course it's a goth band. So I would have to say still Corpus Delicti just because his voice, his voice, God, I can't fucking talk today. His voice is very soothing and, um, it just makes me think of Germany and like being in Europe and I don't know, just nothing I ever experienced when I was over there because of course I was young, but I, it just gives me that like Germany kind of feel like walking down cold cobblestone roads and the old brick buildings and I don't know if I can even know, just the eighties type old school goth cold foreign awesomeness <laughs> and I just um I really love them um my favorite song from them is called Twilight and then I love Lorelai of course and um 
yeah, those are my two favorite ones. Haunting Picture, that's another good one. Uh, number nine, oh, your opinion on Marilyn Manson. I think Marilyn Manson is not goth, just like I think Amy Lee is not goth. Uh, Evanescence is not goth. Um, I think that his style at certain points in his career has been very goth. Um, his look was pretty spot on, awesome. Music is just so obviously not goth. I don't even know what people are thinking of when they call him like the goth king because he's not. He has a look sometimes, but he's also ever changing and ever evolving. So you can't really pinpoint him down to one thing. He's not just metal. He's not just shock rock. He's not just goth. I mean, he he's able to do his own thing. He is his own person. And um, I don't think that people should say everybody that likes Marilyn Manson is goth because Marilyn Manson is a goth band. I mean, that sentence is just ignorance at its finest. I have nothing against him. I love his old shit. I used to be heavily, heavily into Marilyn Manson when, up until I think Antichrist Superstar and, uh, what was one after that? Mechanical Animals? Or did I get that backwards? Those are the last two that I really liked. Um, after that I kind of lost interest, so, you know, but I, even back then, it was like, he's not fucking goth. He's not fucking goth, you know. And lastly, what were your baby bat days like? Um, I don't even know. Uh, I would say embarrassing, but I wasn't really embarrassed. Um, I didn't have any friends that were into goth. I didn't know anybody into goth. Um, back then, people still didn't exactly walk around and with piercings and colored hair and wearing weird shit. I mean, it was more like the late nineties, early two thousands where I was anyway. I don't know if it was different depending on where you were, um, where I was, people were more metalhead gangster rapper kind of shit. And, um, like, I don't know, you just, you didn't just walk around and see goth people. I saw one goth couple once before I ever even knew what goth was years and years later. And, um, I think I was probably, I don't know, 20, 21, 22, something like that around there. And I saw this chick and this guy and he had like this awesome mohawk and she had this teased up hair and they had the big boots on. And I've mentioned this in other videos and I just looked at them and I saw their white faces and the heavy makeup. And I was like, I want to be just like them. Like they look so awesome. Like I was awestruck when I first saw them and they were just supermarket shopping and never saw them again. Don't know who they were, but they left an impact on me. Like I loved the way they looked. And, um, to me, that was the most eye catching style I'd ever seen. Nothing had ever stood out to me before until I saw them. And, um, I never copied their look because the look obviously isn't for me with the spiky hair and all that shit, but, um, just amazing. It just looks so cool. And when I got into it, my boyfriend, Fred at the time, wasn't into it anymore. He was like, I don't know, like he, he was really into rockabilly and he's like slick his hair back and he'd wear like the shirts, like Charlie Sheen on two and a half men with the, the stripes down the side, button up collar shirts. And he'd wear like the bigger kind of pants and the flame shoes and whatever. Like he was big into like Reverend Horton Heat and fucking squirrel nut zippers or whatever. And, um, we actually went to go see, uh, Reverend Horton here when we were together and shit and some other of those bands, which I totally don't remember anymore. Um, but so anyway, he wasn't into goth, but he told me what he knew about it. Um, showed me some places to find, you know, the fashion and the music, which was hard uh, as well because I didn't actually have computer access until I was almost 30. So the whole start of my phase, I didn't get to go online and look for shit. It was just whatever I happened to see or think in my head would look kind of dark and gothy and original. And I would just put it together. I would get something from Kmart and mac match it up with something else. And if it had fairly shit to it or, you know, an overlay of like tool, then I'd wear that or I'd rip things apart and recreate it. And I mean, I can't sew, so I'd super glue and safety pin and, um, 
I started doing my makeup a bit heavier and heavier. And then when I met my second husband, he told me how to do my eyebrows and he taught me how to do my makeup and he taught me how to do my hair and he was goth. And so I learned the rest of what I, I needed to know from him. But before him, I had already gotten pretty ingrained in it myself, just from my own take on what goth was and the style from the little bit that I had seen. I never followed the, the cliche, you know, you have to like this band, this band, this band, this band, out of all the main staples of goth music, I only picked a few that I actually liked because I thought the majority of it really was awful. And so I, I liked other stuff. Um, I do like some mainstream goth bands, but the staple bands, I really don't. Um, and, uh, yeah, I just, I just did my own thing and people thought I was weird anyway, just because even from when I was in middle school, I'd sit there and pierce my face in class. Like I was always in piercings and shit. As soon as I was old enough to get a tattoo, I got, um, this tattoo and then I got the one on my leg and then I got this one here. And even that for a chick at, in those days was a lot. I got my tongue pierced and people stood in line just to see it. They were like, Oh my God. Cause I was working at this rodeo and like, what's that in your mouth? And my tongue pierced. Well, can I see it? And they'd bring their friends up and like it was so unusual. So then when I started going weirder and weirder, it was just more of the same shit I was already used to. And I'd walk around, you know, in my corset and my big long skirt and people just be like, <gasps> but I loved it back then. I mean, I was a kid and I was real kind of cocky and not shy. And me and my best female friend, Brenda, used to walk around the mall holding hands just to piss people off. Cause they're like, oh, lesbian couple would be like, damn straight. And, you know, um, just doing things just to, irritate other people. So yeah, I didn't really have anybody to learn much from. I, I did my learning myself without internet. I don't even know how I did it, honestly, but I did somehow order shit. Um, you know, snail mail going into used record stores and picking out stuff and just word kind of word of mouth. And then as I was already ingrained in it, then I started meeting more people and finding the goth club, Dito and El Paso and and of course, marrying my second husband and things like that. But, um, it was fun and it was interesting. And I think if I had to do it all over again now, I wouldn't be able to, because now I'm a big chicken and I can't stand people looking at me and I'm like scared and nervous all the time. But back then it was perfect for me because I didn't give a shit. So, um, I'll actually put in a couple of pictures if I have them still of what I looked like back then. Looking at it now, it looked really dumb. Like my makeup wasn't all that I, mean, I was still learning, but like I had tried to color my hair and I was wearing these stupid little armlets. I'd buy Halloween costumes and wear them out, which I mean, I kind of still do. Um, some of them are good enough to wear as dresses. And I'm a bit stupid, but some of them work. You take parts from this and parts from that and you just make it your own. And, um, yeah, then the big poofy skirt, which I actually still have. <laughs> And, um, that's about it. So I hope you enjoyed this. I, Emily, man, I try to cut it down. Uh, obviously I talk too much. I can't just answer. Yes. No. Since this, since that, I, I just talk. Talking is my gift or my curse. However you want to look at it. Sorry. Um, the next tags are almost one liners. So hopefully I will cut those videos down a bit. This is quite fun to do though. So I think I'll be looking for more. Thanks again for the idea and I will see you guys shortly. Enjoy the photos. Bye-bye.